halfway across the world. Now, maybe in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't seem like a big move. I mean, a view from space is all you need to remind you that your problems really aren't that big at all. But for me, moving to Japan was such a big step in life. And sure, a lot of people can find Japan on the map, but when I tell them I live in Matsumoto Nagano, they have no idea where it is. And that's fair because before I moved here, I didn't either. So Nagano is just at about at the center of the main island of Honshu, Japan. It's uh, surrounded by mountains. And although it isn't the biggest or most famous city in Japan, it's one I call home and it's one I've fallen in love with. The city I live in is called Matsumoto. It's about the size of Tacoma, actually. And these are some things that I like about Matsumoto. Hello everyone, it's Layback Mark here. Welcome to the beautiful Matsumoto Alps. Here in Matsumoto, you won't see skyscrapers and high-rises. Instead, you're greeted by the surrounding Alps. The elevation being so high that clouds caress the mountain peaks, turning the tops of trees into floating islands in the mist. Welcome to Matsumoto. Um, so, you come to Matsumoto, it's probably the first thing you'll see. This is Matsumoto Station. Though not the biggest station in the world, it is plenty busy as people who go about their days going to high school, their jobs, and tourists come to see the local attractions. If you're new here, the first thing I recommend is going to Starbucks to use the free Wi-Fi. It'll help you get your bearings. Up the west is Kamikochi, and over the hills is Gifu Prefecture. We're here at the west exit. Um, there's not much out here other than a few of the mountains. And a couple of taxi cabs. Going down the escalators on the east side of the station, they'll be greeted by the sight of the city. While not a large metropolis, there are plenty of nooks and crannies to explore, as the multi-level buildings expand the city vertically. The station acts like a central hub, offering affordable transportation via bus, minibus, taxi, and free rentable bikes. Though Matsumoto is so small that almost any area is within a walking distance. To the right and left of the station, you'll find places to eat if you're hungry. Downtown only consists of one major road, but there's a lot to unpack as there are many things on both sides. First, you'll find my favorite Nepalese restaurant. There's all sorts of restaurants on the way as well. If you keep walking, you'll eventually hit the art museum, a mall, and lastly, a park that was featured in orange. The park is actually built around an old high school, so if you want to see what an old high school in Japan looked like, you can come here and go inside. My favorite part is this pond over here, though. All right, hey YouTube, playback Marco. We're here in front of an old sake brewery. Um, we're here at uh, Nakamachi Street. It's actually about 15 minutes away from the station. And the nice thing about shopping here is that you get to support local businesses. There's a lot of old traditional places. There's a traditional bakery down there and there's also some restaurants. All right, here, right across the river from uh, Nak Nakamachi Street is Nawate Street, which is also a traditional place with more restaurants and things to eat. Um, my favorite things to get here are the taiyaki, the, either the custard filled or the chocolate filled. There's these little fish safe things that uh, taste delicious. I think they're made out of pancake batter of some sort, so come down here and check it out. This is one of the businesses on Nawate Street. I wanted to talk about it real quick because I, I've talked to the owner before. The owner is actually a really nice guy and it's actually got a really interesting history. As you know, uh, I'm from Tacoma, but this... Um, actually has a shared workspace above, which has nothing to do with me being in Tacoma, but I'm getting to that. <laughs> but yes, so um, 
This coffee shop actually started in the 19, early 1900s. I think 1913 is when they started in Seattle. They started a coffee shop in Seattle and they were operating there for a little bit before they moved back to Japan, here to Matsumoto. And now they have several chains. There's one in Azumino, which is a city 15 minutes away. I think there's five locations in total. So it's cool to meet the owner and talk to him about that. Hello, welcome to another part of the video. We're here in front of Yoshihara Shrine. It's a shrine as opposed to a temple. You know a little about Japan. There's shrines and there's temples, the Shinto shrine. Uh, the cool thing about coming here is you can make a prayer. Make sure you make the prayer in the right way because it's actually different if you're at a shrine or a temple. Um, also another cool thing is when you're here during the summer you can feed birds. There's a little spot you can make a donation and feed some pigeons. And, uh, I like to take pictures of the pigeons while I have yet to feed them though. We're here in front of Matsumoto-jo or Matsumoto Castle. It's one of the reasons most people come to Matsumoto. It's actually one of the oldest castles in Japan. Um, it's also called Crow's Castle, if you're aware of that name, because of the black and white. Behind me is Kita Matsumoto Station, or literally North Matsumoto Station. And what's so significant about Kita Matsumoto? Well, that thing really, um, it's just really close to my house. It's one of the two stations that are close to my house. And it's also close to my friend Chris's cafe and the Tabishiro, which is the one the Yokan I actually did stay at, so. <laughs> Hello, it's Layback Marco here again, and we're at Joyama Cohen or Joyama Park. It's actually another location that was in the Orange series. Um, Matsumoto Castle was also in Orange, as well as a Parko station and a, a couple other places we went to, like the park. But uh, right now it doesn't look like much green trees. It still is pretty pretty. Um, there's actually a playground right down there. And this large field is filled with people during the spring when the cherry blossoms bloom. Because all these trees are actually cherry blossoms and I've been here before in the spring. It is really beautiful. So it's a good place to check out in the spring if you're here. In the spring, it is really beautiful. So it's a good place to check out in the spring if you're here. We're now heading to my favorite place in Joy Amakoen. It's not actually the park itself, but it's a bit of a climb to get to on some old rickety stairs. Well, they're not old and rickety, but it just seems kind of sketch, so. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm glad I exercised, this would be kind of tough. Also, this isn't the best place to take uh, people like my dad. My dad has a hard time walking. But he did make it to the monkeys. The snow monkeys are quite a hike. I did go do that in Nagano. Oh god, I'm out of breath. <laughs> Alright. So, here we go. This is the best part of Joyama Cohen. Look at this. Just look at it. It's so beautiful up here. You can see almost all of Matsumoto. So we got a couple more places that I want to show you, uh, my city, but until then, uh, let's head in the car and drive there and hope the sun lasts. Wow, just look at the sky, wow, it's like orange. This is just going to be a quicker upload. Um, I'm in the middle of shooting a video about Matsumoto right now, I'm really tired, I've been walking around, going around everywhere, uh, but it should be a pretty cool video when it finally does come out. Uh, right now, I'm going to go to one of my students' ramen shops. Um, one of their family owns it, so I'm going to go check it out. Here at the ramen shop. Okay, so we ate at the ramen shop and uh, it was very, very delicious, very good. Stuff though, stuff though. Um, always feels good to, to eat and not have to cook and clean, but like it was actually uh, so, so good. Very good ramen. It was pork, pork ramen, so that's my favorite kind. I always get the, the tonkatsu, so I'm feeling pretty stuffed.
Yesterday we ran out of light, but today is another nice cloudy day, and I say cloudy because cloudy is actually better for shooting photos and videos, um, and right before the sun sets and rises. But today is another cloudy day, so we're about to go to about three more places that I wanted to show you, and uh, then you'll know a little bit about where I live. We're here at Chimauchi Station, which uh, there's really nothing too significant about it other than it's also close to my house. It's about the same distant walk as it is to Kita Matsumoto Station. When I wanted to come to Japan, the big city was really the last place we wanted to go. For me, it was the small town, the rice paddies, small little train stops. Those were the things I wanted to see. The peaceful things I saw in pictures. The next location we're going to, you can see from here. We made it. There's just like barely any light to spare, but it's enough for a high ISO grainy video, so I hope you're okay with that. But we made it here. Whew. Actually, I don't know which way to go. Oh, oh, I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> it's this way. Anyway, we made it here to Alps Park. It's another location with a really nice view. And the roads getting here are pretty fun, I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed myself driving on those. <laughs> so, this is another place where people come to have hanami, and uh, I'm pretty sure there's like a, a local wildlife enclosure or something. Uh, let's go check it out. It's also like some little museum tower thing that you can go to on the top floor, so it's closed right now so we can't, but you can. Let's take a look at that. It's just like really beautiful. Wow. been here for so long but I just learned that there's a mini golf course behind me. <laughs> so this giant field here during spring also is an area where people will have hanami and uh, there's like a music stage right there. I don't know if there's any concerts here. <laughs> this is kind of cool. There's like a thing. It's kind of like a sled course thing. I don't know, you've, ever, you've probably seen those uh, GoPro videos of people doing them on a really long one. Dream Costa. Alright, so you, you push the level forward and you go faster, and you push it back to slow down. <laughs> There's a, a Dobutsu forest, or uh, an animal forest. It's like a mini zoo. It's a shame the park actually closes at 4.30, but if you look really close, you can see some owls right there. <laughs> I think owls are so cute. Dobutsu... in. Oh, it is a... it is a zoo. Not gonna lie, being <laughs> alone in this big park with all these animal sounds is a little eerie. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna end up on one of those found footage horror movies. <laughs> this place is usually a lot more lively. It looks a lot uh, nicer during the summer when the sun's out. It's kind of creepy on a day like today. <laughs> I'm gonna get attacked by a Japanese poltergeist or some. But anyway, we're on to our last stop, which is a surprise, so I'll show you when I get there. So this little traditional part of town is called Asama Onsen. It's like a resort spa place because there's actually hot springs around here. So it's uh, one of the reasons I wanted to come here. All right, hello YouTube. Just got out of the bath at uh, Netflix Onsen and uh, now I'm just chilling in the relaxation room. I'm feeling pretty relaxed. <laughs> I spent like an hour in there. Whoa. Every day should be this relaxing. I kind of showed you everything I wanted to see. This is just bonus. Um, I went to the, the, the onsen and that was really relaxing. Now I'm going to get something to eat because I'm hungry. I don't feel like cooking on the weekend. I did cook lunch though. 
because I'm trying to save money. So I cooked lunch and now I'm going to eat out. Probably going to get Chinese food. Yeah, yeah. You're a vlogger. You're a vlogger, not a vlogger. Mm. <laughs> YouTuber. Vlog in the sky. Film. Ah, film! I like to make film. Oh, okay. Short film. Oh, no. Mama, you know that you come on. It's a little taste of home, huh? My god, that was a, that was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> so I was actually looking for a Chinese restaurant. And I stumbled into this restaurant and, uh, it was a Filipino place with Filipino people. I uh, had some adobo and it tasted like home. It was just a good feeling. So now we're gonna drive home.